Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a little while since we've done a workshop update, so I thought I'd do one now, just to give you an idea of what's going on and uh, how things are progressing. Things we're going to go through is, first of all, what's in this box. Uh, secondly, we're going to talk a little bit about a brand new piece of machinery just there. Uh, thirdly, we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing with the air filtration in this place uh, and a couple more things as well. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, we'll start off by talking about the elephant in the room. It's not quite an elephant, but it's certainly an elephant sized box. Uh, this is Hopefully, this is the answer to my tool storage requirements. Uh, in the old place, in the old workshop, my tools were all over. I had a lot on the stand that you'll see behind me, but a lot were on other workbenches, in other drawers, all over the place. And the ideal situation for me is to try and get everything in one place, so I'm not always constantly hunting for them. Now, while I was on a website uh, called Crytek Power uh, in the UK, I was looking at their sawmills and things like that. Then I came across their tool storage section uh, and I noticed this beast uh, and I kind of fell in love with it. I got in touch with the owner. Uh, he very, very kindly gave me a little discount. So I bought it on the spot and now it's here. So let's open it up and see what's inside. give you a 72 inch 15 drawer tool cabinet. Now there should be some wheels in here somewhere. There we go, right. Keys. I think they've been there for now. That's handy, it comes with uh, handles for both ends. Normally they come with just one end and you have to try and decide where you're going to want it, but now I can put one at both ends and we won't have to worry. And then here hopefully should be four rollers. Look at the size of that. That's like a six, six inch wheel. That is incredible. Okay, right, I'll figure out the best way to get these wheels on, and then I'll show you. Okay, that's the wheels on. One thing I was worried about is when I lifted it up that the bottom wheels or the back wheels would slide out. But as the, we've obviously thought about this situation, the back wheels are locked in a sideways direction. So when I lift this up, hopefully it's not going to try and get away from me. That was easier than I hoped. I'll get the handles on both sides and then we're going to figure out where we're going to put it. Okay, all built. It wasn't too bad actually. I was scared about putting this one together because it is a bit of a weight, but uh, despite that, I managed fine and I'm not an overly strong man. Uh, it's got 15 drawers, like I say. All the drawers are nicely lined, so there's no problem uh, putting your tools in there or getting anything damaged or the horrible noise that you get from metal shelves. Uh, the fit and finish 
is all nice, it's all beautiful. The wheels went on absolutely no problem at all. I'm absolutely loving this stainless steel top. Uh, nice to have this here because my father, uh, my late father, uh, dealt his whole life with stainless steel. Uh, and it's nice to be able to have something so beautiful in the workshop. Right, so where are we going to put it? Uh, the ideal situation, I think, for me at the moment is to put it where these two uh, sets of cupboards are now. Uh, they're okay, but the access to the doors is very limited. It's actually quite hard to find things in there. So I'm gonna push them down into the crafting area of the workshop for now. Uh, the cabinet that my grinder is on, I think the grinder is now gonna live on here as well. So it's like an all-in-one solution system. It'll have the program tools uh, in that top drawer there. So there they're easy to access. And then we'll have everything else spread across the other drawers. I'm not gonna to rush to fill it. Uh, I'm gonna let that kind of naturally evolve. I'll be putting in things that I can put in straight away. But then rather than trying to decide everything now where they are gonna go, I'm gonna let that naturally evolve uh, to see what things I use most uh, and to have them all at hand in nice, easy positions, uh, situations now, in nice, easy positions now. So right, I'm gonna get this, these two cabinets moved that way. Uh, I'll put this against the wall, and then I'll put the grinder back on the top, plug all that back in, and then we can look at something else. for my program system. That feels good. Okay. While we're here, let's talk about this little thing. Now, up until a couple of days ago, I couldn't even tell you this machine existed. Uh, Record Power asked me to keep this one secret. Uh, it's been in my workshop for a couple of months, uh, and it's an amazing piece of machinery. It's the, the Sabre 300. And if you're familiar with the Record Power range of bandsaws, they do the normal range and they also do the Sabre range. The Sabre range have more, uh, it's kind of beefed up in every way. The more powerful motors, uh, better quality components, and they just do more for the money. Uh, this is the Sabre 300 and it sits between the 250 that's existing and the 350. It's a 12 inch bandsaw and it really has some amazing capabilities. It's got a really, really powerful motor. And I'm gonna be taking you through more of this in a few weeks time. I have at the unboxing, uh, and setting up video, and I'm also going to be making videos on uh, its specification. I'm going to take it through its paces, and we're going to make something really, really cool with it. Okay, we're in the crafting side of the workshop. Uh, this is probably the messiest, so I'm going to restrict you at the moment to this view. Uh, the main problem I've got in here, it's a nice space, everything's working fine, but the main problem is the lighting. The lighting is from the old workshop, and it's attached to the ceiling at the moment, in uh, a kind of a makeshift way because I need to do something about it. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's changed, but these lights are generally creating a lot of flickering. Uh, on a couple of last videos, if you just noticed in the background, you've seen a little bit of flickering. That's caused by these lights. Now I've tried a few different things and I've, I've gone with this lot. Yeah. Uh, these are six kind of warehouse style LED lights, they're rated at 200 watts each. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to attach them to the ceiling, but I want them attached in a way that I can move them around for different situations. Uh, the lighting I've got in the uh, over the lathe is fixed in one place because the lathe isn't really going to move that much, but I need a bit of flexibility with some of the lighting uh, as I'm moving around the workshop to do things in different areas because we have lots of plans for the future. Uh, and I'm never quite sure exactly where I'm going to be doing it. I hope to eventually at some point start making a table or something like that. I've always wanted to try and make one. It's not going to be a resin table. At least I don't think it's going to be a resin table. But I've always wanted to try my hands at 
making something like that, doing some actual proper woodwork. So we will be doing that at some point. The last real issue I've got to face now is with dust extraction. Okay, with extraction, at the moment, the only place I really use it is when I'm sanding with the lathe. I do have an air extraction up there and I've got another unit uh, here as well, which I'm gonna be installing at some point very soon. Uh, my vacuum current placement is in this corner. And when I want to do some sanding, I have to drag this over and put it at the other side of the lathe. Now, if it was just that one piece of equipment, I can handle doing that. It's nothing, uh, it's no great hardship. But now we've got the bandsaw, we're gonna need a slightly more intricate system. Not terribly complicated, but more intricate than I'm used to. Uh, the vacuum, what I'm thinking of doing is moving that to the top of the workshop in that corner where there's currently loads of paint because obviously we're in a new house and we're having to paint everything. Uh, and then I'm gonna be running a pipe up the wall along the top. I'll probably put a T in that position there with a cap on it just in case I need to, in the future, have any piece of equipment around there that needs extraction. Carrying around another T in there, coming down for the bandsaw and then continuing around the top over the garage door along the wall and then down. Actually, I may put it in that corner and put a pipe along, pipe along the wall to behind the lathe. That's my plans for the extraction. I've got the pipe already. It's not proper uh, dust pipe, but uh, that stuff's very, very expensive. And I've managed to find a solution which is gonna cost me about uh, just over a hundred pounds. So hopefully that'll be good. Well, I think that's just about it. Okay, so that's what's going on in the workshop. As you can imagine, still a lot to do, uh, but we are getting there. I'd like to say thank you to Crytek Power for their speedy delivery of this amazing workshop cab. Uh, it really is gonna be a bit of a game changer in terms of me being able to find things around this workshop. Uh, if you're in need of something like this, please take a look on their website, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, they have many different sizes uh, and colours and styles available. They also have lots of other incredible machinery designed around building and, uh, and the processing of lumber as well. So that's about it for now. Uh, I'd better start tidying up because I've got a video to get out for next Tuesday. So there we go. Thank you much indeed. I'll see you next time. Thank you.